I'd like for you to imagine for a moment that you have built the perfect house. This is a dream house that you've always wanted to build and you've built it with your own bare hands. You are so proud of it. Now, you have done every little tiny detail that you've always wanted in a home, all the way from the design to the furniture that you have decided to put in this home. Every aspect of this house is perfect. Now you decide that you're going to do something noble. And instead of moving into this house yourself, you're going to let everyone you've ever loved move into this house and live there rent free. You only ask one thing of them, and that is to enjoy it and take care of it because you have put your heart and soul into this place. You love watching all of your loved ones enjoy your creation. But as time goes on, a friend of yours decides to start telling lies about you. See, he's jealous. He is a drunk, a meth addict, is in and out of work, is messy, and has been to jail multiple times. But he's going around slandering your name. He starts telling everyone that you hate your family, that you're only doing this for selfish reasons to make yourself look good, and that's why you're allowing your family to live in your house. So eventually, you've decided that you've had enough of what this guy is saying. You're tired of his garbage, and you decide to take action. So, for some odd reason, you decide that you're going to force him to live in that house so he can see that you do indeed have right intentions and you want him to be able to see for himself. Well, you know his lifestyle, but you have a point to prove. But, as what one could predict, he decides to start to destroy this house. He punches holes in the walls, he defecates on the floors, and he draws graffiti all over the walls. Well, your family starts to beg you, please, kick him out. Why did you allow him here? And you say, no, I'm sorry, I have a point to prove. He's going to stay. Well, they beg you again. He's destroying everything. We know you love this house. Please kick him out. You snap back at them. You're lucky I let you live here in the first place. I know what I'm doing. Deal with it. Well, there's a similar story to that in the Bible. Open your Bibles with me to Revelation 12, 7 through 9. Revelations 12, 7 through 9. And it reads, and war broke out into heaven. Michael and his angels battled with the dragon, and the dragon battled back and its angels. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them any longer in heaven. So down the great dragon was hurled, the original serpent, the one called the devil and Satan, who was misleading the entire inhabited earth. He was hurled down to earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. So why did God choose to send the devil, the father of the lie, here to his wonderful creations, he, creation he built for humanity to prove a point? He could have just sent Satan somewhere else. Millions of planets out there that are desolate. Could he have not just banished him to one of those? Remember, Satan is the ultimate father of the lie. And he decided to send him here to earth, knowing full well how fragile humanity is. Shouldn't Satan have been held to a higher standard, seeing how he is a superior creature to humans? He should have been annihilated the minute he deceived Adam and Eve, shouldn't he? Perhaps God wanted to give him a second chance. We know God is love. Perhaps he wanted to give him a second chance 
to see if Satan could indeed be a better ruler than God. Well, in doing so, he allowed Satan to live here for hundreds of years, but let humans' lives be cut short due to age, sickness, and tragedy, while the ultimate deceiver still lives on to this day. God promises that maybe one day he will do something about this deceiver, maybe sometime in the future. Well, what about God's beloved creatures, human beings? Does he extend that same courtesy to us? Open your Bibles again with me to Genesis, Genesis 7, 21 through 23. This is going to be familiar to you, no doubt. This is the story of Noah and the ark. That's Genesis 7. We'll read 21 through 23. It says, So all living creatures that were moving on the earth perished. The flying creatures, the domestic animals, the wild animals, the swarming creatures, and all of mankind. Everything on dry land that had been, that had breath of life in its nostrils died. So he wiped every living thing from the surface of the earth, including man, animals, creeping animals, and flying creatures of the sky. They were all wiped off the earth. Only Noah and those in the ark survived. So, again, here's the story of the ark. When people disobeyed God, did he give them the second, third, fourth chance that he gave the father of the lie? No, they didn't get that chance. They were wiped clean almost immediately. Well, you might argue, well, Noah warned these people. He warned them that a flood was going to come. And that is true. But that does that still warrant the painful death of drowning, the wrathful and immediate death that uh, he gave human beings and still allows the father of the lie himself to live on? Well, going back to our original story about the house you built and you allow, allowed the meth head friend to live in, were you, if you were to have denied him and ignored his lies or removed him from your life and focused on your family and your home, your beautiful home you built and the love you have for your family and nurtured that, wouldn't that be a better way of doing it? Well, you could definitely be considered somebody who has the quality of love. And maybe you could, they could even say that you are love had you've gone down that route. Then we could truly say that your focus was on your precious creation. Thank you.